What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Import Modify. On this episode we're going to be installing this oil cooler kit into the Z31 Turbo, but it is a new year so let's start things off fresh with a new intro. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that new intro. Those are the cars of Import Modify. Now, I do actually own all those cars and work on them, so future content of those cars and future episodes will be included. But we're going to start things off in the new year with this oil cooler kit for the Z31 Turbo, and it is a great kit. It is a G-Plus brand. Now, I do have great experience with G-Plus, and uh, basically, if you were to buy this kit from, like, Mishimoto or any other company, it, it would probably be about three times the price. Now, I paid about $170-ish for this kit, sent to my door and it's pretty simple the way it works basically you take off the oil filter and you have this adapter plate that's going to screw that's going to screw into the block and you're going to run a line off of this to this adapter right here where your oil filter is going to mount and it did include a bracket to mount it wherever you choose on the body and then off of this adapter it's going to feed into the oil cooler and then from the oil cooler you'll feed it back to this adapter plate and that is basically it now they did include an electronic fan to help aid in cooling so we're going to be mounting all this into the Z31 Turbo, but first we got to take off that bumper cover just to gain access to everything so I can figure out a proper place to put this bad boy. Alright, so we got the front bumper cover off and I took the air filter portion of the intake out in order to get full access to the front area. Now, first of all, what we need to do is remove the oil filter. Now, the oil filter, it is below this header right here, the manifold, and it is right there. So we need to remove that and install that adapter plate so we can connect the hoses and run them up towards the front and see exactly what we have to work with. All right guys, so I went ahead and I removed the starter just to gain access to the area where the oil filter goes and I wanted to show you guys in depth, but I went ahead and sized up the threads for where the oil filter goes because they give you two different sizes on these fittings and it is the smaller of the two. So that's gonna thread on like that. So this piece right here actually goes into the uh, sandwich plate, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some Teflon paste around the threads and tighten that down. And I'm also gonna put Teflon paste on these fittings as well, snug those in and let them cure up so that I can ensure I do not have any leaks. And then whenever I go to snug this up to the block, I'm also gonna put RTV around the uh, mating surface of where these O-rings made up to. And that will ensure that I do not have any leaks over time with the sandwich plate. And once we have the sandwich plate mounted up, I'm gonna loosely put the hoses on and see exactly where we're gonna route them so we can get a proper placement for the oil cooler. All right guys, so I got the sandwich plate mounted up to the block now and I got RTV on it as well. So whenever it cures, it's gonna guarantee it does not leak. So now that we got this mounted up, we're gonna go ahead and loosely connect the hoses and run them to the front and see what we got to work with. All right guys, so I went ahead and installed the hoses to the sandwich plate and 
whenever I did that, it did rotate the sandwich plate a little bit more, but it's not a big deal. It doesn't get in the way of anything. And I have the hoses coming out following the rail out through the front and it's coming through this little side access I have on the side of the radiator. And now these hoses are just a little bit too long, so I'm gonna have to tape them off and cut them to uh, you know get proper fitment of everything. But I am gonna, I'm leaning towards installing the oil cooler on this side, kind of like in the front area, making a bracket to hold it up straight. And uh, I'm going to use the angle bracket that came with the kit and mount it right here on this bottom brace for the intercooler. And it's gonna sit that oil relocation plate up right here so I can unscrew the oil filter and drain it for easy access right here. So that's what I'm up against. I need to go to Home Depot. I need to source out some uh, brackets and whatnot in order to make proper uh, mounting brackets for the oil cooler and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then uh, once I figure things out, uh, I'll get back to you guys. All right guys, so I've been tossing around a couple ideas in order to get the oil cooler mounted properly and be as efficient as possible and actually come up with an idea that I think is gonna work out just fine. And what I ended up coming up with is I have some two inch wide flat stock. Now I laid it across the bottom mounts right there for the intercooler and we're gonna trim each side and bolt that in and that allows me to place that oil cooler just like that. And it's sitting right up there close to the intercooler and that allows incoming air to directly hit that oil cooler and make that thing as efficient as possible. And it's also gonna make things proportionate because I'm gonna have that oil filter relocation adapter right here in the back and the oil filter is gonna be sticking out that way. So things are gonna look proportion, proportionate and allow me to route hoses nice and neatly. So we're gonna go with that idea and I'm also gonna make mounts from here to go to the bumper and that will allow four, four points of contact to secure that bad boy nice and secure and I won't have to worry about it moving around or anything like that. So we're gonna run with that idea and I also was looking at the adapter plate itself and I came across a little bit of an issue, just a small one, it's pretty, pretty simple to fix, but this is the adapter that you have to use in order to use the factory size filter. This is the side that threads into the filter, this is the side that threads into the body, but the way that it sits as of right now is this portion of it is a little too tall. It doesn't allow this middle part of it to sit nice and secure on the surface and the end result of that is this does not thread in enough to create a nice seal on the surface here. So we're gonna take care of that with just removing a couple threads and that'll allow everything to sit up like it's supposed to and allow this to tighten down nice and securely on that surface. So we're gonna start off by taking care of those issues. We're gonna get that bolted in and then after that we will start taking care of the hoses. All right guys, so I got everything mounted up for the most part. I went ahead and took the time and uh, made my markings where I'm gonna be cutting the hoses. So basically the way I have it working is I have you know, the block fitting, the sandwich plate on the block feeding to the adapter plate. And you wanna go from the outside fitting on the block to the outside fitting on the adapter plate here because it flows from the outside in. So you match those up and then it filters, it comes through the center, feeds through, I got it to the far side right here is where it's gonna feed into. And then it goes through the oil cooler. It's gonna feed out this way and then go back to the block on the center fitting. And that way it will ensure that everything is routed properly and your oil will be filtered before the oil cooler itself. And that will keep particles from collecting inside that thing and uh, causing a clog. So keep that in mind whenever you're putting this kit together, you always wanna put the oil filter before the oil cooler. So we're gonna go ahead now, make our cuts 
and I'm going to take off the fittings and reattach them and then we will uh, carry on from there. All right guys, so we're gonna be installing the end fitting on this hose right here. And as you saw before, I had it marked off where to cut it. And I used some 3M electrical tape because that stuff is pretty durable. And I really like using 3M products. When I'm dealing with, uh, you know, still braided hoses and uh, the end fittings. So I cut it right in the middle and that keeps the braided end together on this end of the hose like that. And the end fitting itself is pretty, uh, pretty simple. Basically, you have your end fitting like this. This is a t uh, dash 10, 90 degree bend. So you want to take this piece off right here. And this is the piece that you're going to be sliding onto the hose right there. And uh, basically, I like to keep the uh, electrical tape on this end. And, uh, you know, it'll go in just fine. And it'll keep things from poking you. Uh, we'll keep the steel braided line from poking you and I've done this in the past many times and I had great success doing it So I like to keep just this little bit of electrical tape on the hose and uh, I've never had a problem with it backing off that way But basically you're gonna take this piece right here and uh, this is the part that's flat That's gonna go towards the end fitting itself. This piece right here is what you're gonna slide in over the hose so basically all you do is you just you know hold it firm you want to uh, make sure you start it fitting in the rib and then from there you just want to twist it on and you know you're all the way in whenever you can see the rubber hose made it up against the fitting as you can see the rubber hose has made it all the way in there so now we're gonna be putting the end fitting to this adapter right here and it's pretty simple you just want to make sure you lubricate things now I use engine oil or WD-40 but we got engine oil we're gonna use engine oil so I'm just gonna get some on my finger And I'm gonna put it on the nipple end right here. Like that. And, and I'm just gonna use this, uh, this Phillips screwdriver. And I'll basically, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dip the end in it just to get it wet. I'm gonna put this end of it right here into the uh, hose on the inside and just kind of lubricate the inside of that hose a little bit and from there we're gonna go ahead and thread that piece on from here you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna slide that in Like that, and then you're gonna go ahead and thread it in. Now you gotta keep keep in mind you don't want this to back out, so you just kind of eyeball the the uh, steel braid on the back side of the fitting, just to ensure that it doesn't back out whenever you're threading it in. Okay, now it's a little tight, so I'm gonna use two adjustable wrenches. Now we're gonna go ahead and thread it in. Now all the while I am paying attention to the backside of the fitting, making sure that the hose does not back out while I'm threading it in. And 
And there you have it. There is an end fitting attached to the hose and everything's nice and clean around the, the edge of it and it came out beautiful. So that's basically all you do to install an end fitting. So if you guys want to tackle that, be uh, rest assured that it is not very hard to do at all. So we'll move on. All right, guys, I got all the hand fittings on. I got everything tightened down and I'm very happy with the results. Now I did have to source out some extra and fittings out of the, the stock that I have on hand. And, you know, I always keep and fittings and things like that in case I run into cases like this where I needed an extra 90 degree and fitting. And I also needed a 45 degree and fitting just to make the lines flow smooth because with the straight fitting, it was just too tight of a bend and it was pushing the hose against the frame on the side right there. So I put that 45 degree uh, fitting on and now the line flows nice and neat. And also, you know, like I stated, I needed an extra 90 and I had one on hand. You know, it's not the same color, but it's black. The car is black, red. Yeah, I got red, blue. Yeah, I got blue. So it still fits the theme of the car and uh, beggars can't be choosers at this point, but I'm digging it. And I also made a mount right here out of flat stock and I went to the bumper. Now, after putting this, uh, this mount on this thing is not going nowhere it is very secure so i didn't bother making another mount because that's more than adequate but now that we got everything together i need to uh drain the oil put new oil in it crank it let it run check for leaks and then after that we could put everything back together and take it on a cruise and see how well it all works guys I got it warmed up I've been letting it run for a little bit checking the oil level in between and I don't see any leaks as of yet so we should be good on it all the fittings look nice and dry and you know we got good oil pressure and everything so she's purring along I have to get my mirror with the light to look up underneath and see these fittings down here but everything seems to be holding up just fine so that is a good thing I'm gonna let it run just a little bit more then I'm gonna put the bumper cover on and everything and get it ready. And then once we got it all back together, we'll take it on a spin, get this thing up to temperature, see if it holds up and do some donuts in the process and just, uh, you know, have some fun with it. All right guys, so it's the next day. Last night when I got done checking everything, it was just pretty late and it was dark. So I come in uh, today to take care of uh, one thing was a leak that I found and these little MPT bolts right here on the side were leaking. So I went ahead and tightened them up and cleaned it up a little bit. So that way I can see if it's going to leak still. But uh, that was the only leak that I found. And I also took the time and I lowered the rear ride height because I wasn't happy how high the rear was sitting as opposed to the front. So I leveled it out, making it nice and even all the way around to give it a, nice, a nicer lowered stance. So I went ahead and took care of that real quick. Now I'm going to crank up the car again, verify that it uh, does not leak anymore and then uh, let it warm up and we'll go on a test drive. Right in the middle, I'm gonna see how long it is before I have to engage the fan. 
go ahead and do a little bit of burnout, some little donut rings. Alright guys, sorry I had to cut that little test drive short, you know, while I was out there, you know, doing some donuts. The, one of the business owners, he came outside, he was trying to write down my license plate, so I just, I got out of there. I don't need cops getting involved because I don't have insurance on the vehicle, and I don't want the cops impounding my car. So, uh, I've been waiting for a good point in time to have this thing reliable, so I could drive it in and out of traffic and whatnot, and I think we're finally at that point, so I'll be getting insurance on the vehicle to drive this thing legally so that's the reason i cut it short but the install of the oil cooler was a success and i can definitely tell that it does contribute to helping out the cooling of the engine because it takes longer now for me to engage the uh, electronic fan on the radiator as opposed to before i don't have a temperature gauge for the oil the one in the car it doesn't work so i can't give you any hard numbers unfortunately but it is very nice install and I'm very happy with it and it looks really trick seeing these steel braided lines in there, you know, kind of grabs your attention. So very happy with that. This car is finally reliable for me to insure it and start enjoying it. So that is a good thing indeed. Now you might notice I didn't install this electronic fan for the oil cooler yet. And the reason for that being is I've been waiting on this fuse box to come in, which I checked my mail and it finally came in. So I want to clean up the wiring that's on the battery because I got quite a few wires feeding off the battery. So to, to do that, I got this uh, fuse box where I can integrate all that wiring into this box and each circuit will have its own dedicated fuse and that will clean things up a lot. Now, when I go ahead and do that, I'll take care of this fan and install it on the oil cooler and that will definitely help out with temperatures and stop and go traffic where airflow can't be a constant across it. And it's not that I desperately need you know all this cooling aid it's just that it is a turbo car it helps out with things and uh i do know notice sometimes when you know i'm kind of you know heavy footed in stop and go traffic and stuff that the temperature gauge will get a little bit above the middle but as soon as i stop horsing around it comes back down towards the middle of the gauge and it's just fine and the reason for that is because i do have a smaller radiator and with that oil cooler it does help out so that's the reason why I went with an oil cooler to begin with, and uh, yeah, it is what it is. So, all right, uh, next episode, guys, we're going to kind of break away from the norm. I'm going to be working on my shopmate Eric's motorcycle he got. He bought him a motorcycle so he can start riding bikes with me and enjoying them because I do have... I do have crotch rockets, I do enjoy riding them, and I do have a couple track dedicated motorcycles where I do like to go to track days and cut up quite a bit and, and uh, ride pretty hardcore. So I do have bikes and he wants to get into that fun, so he got himself a, uh, a motorcycle, but it does need some work because he bought it pretty cheap. And I told him I'd help him out with that and he's been asking me you know, quite often to help him lately and I just have not had the time to do it until now so next episode that's what we're gonna do we're gonna be working on an sv650 so if you guys don't know much about motorcycles just keep an open mind and uh you might learn a couple things it's pretty cool the way they lay these bikes out so we're gonna help them get that thing running right that's gonna be the next episode and then after that we will be starting on the m3 motor swap here so 
Uh, quick note though, I want to thank all you new subscribers for joining the channel and uh, we are so close to the 1000 mark and I just can't wait until we break that barrier. It's been a while, I've been doing this channel for over a year now and I thought I'd be further along than what it is, but you know, it is what it is. I'm sticking around, I can tell you that much. So if you're watching this for the first time, go ahead and subscribe, man. If you like this content, just wait. We got a lot of good stuff coming this year. So anyway, I'm out of here, guys. Y'all know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will definitely see you guys on the next episode.